Good morning. I'm Pastor Brian here at Richfield Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis. With us today are MB as assisting minister, Paul on the organ, and Eric as our vocalist. Today is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Our gospel is Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Our readings during November speak of the end times. Here Jesus tells the parable of the, of the talents, calling us to use our gifts while we still have time for the greater and common good. In a world filled with violence and despair, we gather around signs of hope, word, bread, and wine, eager to welcome the good news of Christ's coming among us. Today, we celebrate the communion. You are invited to receive. Please have bread and juice or something comparable ready. Our prelude is Canon in B Major by Schumann. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our gathering hymn is, O Happy Day When We Shall Stand. Oh, 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, God, our merciful Master, Master, you own the earth earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Gospel is Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Here, Jesus tells a parable about his second coming, indicating that it is not sufficient merely to maintain things as they are. Those who await his return should make good use of the gifts that God has provided them. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more. But the one who received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you do not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went, and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow, and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take this talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. And those who have an abundance, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How many here buy Powerball tickets? Last I saw it is over $158 million. I don't know whether this is obvious or not, but I am not a gambler. I do not enjoy it one bit. It makes me anxious, which makes me a bit of an odd bird in in board games uh, when we play Risk. As a child, you know, the, the, the board game with the map of the world is divided into countries and you have these little army pieces. Well, I would always occupy Australia. I would just sit there. I would never attack anyone. 
Now, one friend, he would get so upset that I wouldn't attack him. Well, I didn't need to. I mean, I had acquired so many armies that no one could attack me. Well, he just got mad and he threw the board over. <laughs> the whole speculative aspect of it makes me anxious. I'm not a gambler. Uh, once when we were driving out to California, we spent the night in some hotel in Nevada. Now, I didn't know this, but every hotel in Nevada has slot machines in it. And when you check in, they give you $2 of these free nickels, hoping that you'd run down to the casino and get gambling. Well, I just pocketed those nickels. <laughs> Boy, I would make a not a very good farmer, would I? But this rich man in today's parable, now he is quite a gambler. I mean, he hands eight talents to three of his slaves. A talent is a coin worth, well, it's over half a million dollars today. That's a lot of money. And he gives eight of them, four million dollars, to his slaves to work while he's gone. Those must have been some slaves to entrust all that to them. And the rich man leaves. They don't know when he's going to be back. He doesn't check back periodically. There's no cell phone or email just for him to touch base. He might be six months distant. So the only safeguard here is they don't know when he's going to be back. So they got to work his talents all that time. Since they just can't look busy right when they know he's going to return. The first two slaves work their talents, and they double them. Pretty impressive. That's a 100% return on investment. But the third slave, he's sort of like me, not a gambler, afraid of failure, afraid of losing it all. So he does not work his talent. He does the safe thing, and he buries it in a Folgers coffee can in the backyard. He knew that if he couldn't show at whole when his master returned, well, his master would be very angry. And he sure as heck didn't want that. But, you know, when you look at how well the first two slaves did, I mean, what was the third slave really afraid of? I mean, working these talents, it's a no-brainer. They, they practically grow by themselves. All you got to do is get them going. Eh, it looks like a risk, but not really. Well, the rich man returns. And the first two slaves get praised big time. This third slave gets the very treatment he feared all along. He gets yelled at big time. Seems he really misread his master. You think he would have picked up on that when his master was so extraordinarily trusting and generous in the first place, giving mere slaves this ridiculous amount of money. The parable seems rather obvious. Christ is counting on you. He entrusts us with a ridiculous abundance of talents. And he needs us to put them to work. This is how God gets mission and ministry done throughout the world. It's like God first promised Father Abraham way back in Genesis 12. We are blessed by God to be a blessing to all the nations. It's like the children of a farmer Ma and Pa need to go somewhere. They don't know how long it's going to take, but they will be back. And in the meantime, they're hoping and praying that, that we, the kids, will be able to pull it off. I mean, the dairy cows need to be milked and the corn needs to be worked. It's not rocket science, but it's hard work. They're confident we can pull it off. They're counting on us. They're sure we can do it. But yeah, it's still a gamble. I mean, we have to do our part. Because the only sure thing is we will lose the farm if we do nothing. It's like Martin Luther said, sin boldly, he said. It's a great quote, isn't it? Sin boldly. What an odd saying. What Luther meant is, get off your backside and do something. Don't just cower in fear of disappointing God, because whether you get it right or not, pray boldly to receive God's grace even more profoundly. Or someone else put it, pray as if it all depends on God and work as if it all depends on you. It's like this. There was a good king who rules, ruled wisely and who ruled well. All the people of this kingdom loved him. One day, the king called his four daughters together and told them he was going on a long journey. He said, I wish to learn about God, and I will spend a long time in prayer. In my absence, I will leave the four of you in charge. Oh, Father, they cried, don't leave us. We will never be able to rule the kingdom without you. The king smiled. You will do well in my absence, he said. 
Now, before I leave, I wish to give each of you a gift. It is my prayer that this gift will help you learn the meaning of rule. The king placed a single grain of rice in each daughter's palm, and then he left. The oldest daughter immediately went to her room, and she tied this long golden thread around the, the grain of rice and placed it in this beautiful crystal box. And every day she would pick up the box and look at it. The second daughter also went to her room, where she placed the grain of rice in a wooden box and put it in a secure spot under her bed. The third daughter, a very pragmatic woman, looked at the grain of rice and said, this grain of rice is no different than any other grain of rice, and she just threw it away. The youngest daughter took the grain of rice to her room, and she wondered about the significance of the gift. She wondered for a week, and then for a month. When nearly a year had passed, she understood the meaning of the gift. Months turned into years, and the four daughters ruled in the absence of their father. Then one day the king returned. His beard was full, and his eyes sparkled with illumination gained through years of prayer. The king greeted each of his daughters, then asked to see the gifts he had left them. The oldest daughter rushed to her room, and she brought the crystal box. Father, she said, I carefully tie this golden thread around the grain of rice and have kept it near my bed where I looked at it every day since you left. Bowing to his youngest daughter, the king accepted the crystal box and said, thank you. Next, the second daughter presented her father with the grain of rice. She said, all these years I've kept the rice secure under my bed. And here it is. Again, the king bowed accepted the box, and said, thank you. The third daughter rushed to the kitchen, found a grain of rice, ran back and said, Father, here's the grain of rice. Smiling, the king accepted the grain of rice, and he bowed, and he said, thank you. Finally, the youngest daughter stepped before her father and spoke. I do not have the grain of rice that you gave me, she said. What did you do with it? The king inquired. Father, I thought about that grain of rice for nearly a year before I discovered the meaning of the gift. I realized the grain of rice was a seed, so I planted it in the ground. Soon it grew, and from it I harvested other seeds, and I planted all of those seeds again. And again I harvested the crop. Father, I've continued to do this every season while you were away, so come, look at the results. And the king followed his youngest daughter to the window where he looked out at an enormous crop of rice stretching as far as the eye can see. There was enough rice to feed their small nation. Stepping before his daughter, the king took off his crown and placed it on her head. And he said, you have learned the meaning of rule. From that day, the youngest daughter ruled the kingdom. She ruled long, she ruled wisely, and she ruled well. When your stewardship response letter arrives this week, prayerfully reflect on the talents God has entrusted with you. How will you respond to God's call? Will you take that next step, even if it feels a little risky? Well, put it to work, because you can't lose good and faithful servant. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our hymn of the day is When Peace Like a River.
time we ask that you continue to share your tithe and offering for God's mission and ministry through Richfield Lutheran Church. And now we gather at the table of the Lord. If you have toast and juice or something comparable ready, this is the time. If not, you might want to pause the tape and, and go get it now. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as you remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as you remember me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Of Christ given for you, blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Announcement. Remember, our Stewardship Giving Response Sunday is next week, so look for your letter in the mail this week. Join us here next week for Christ the King Sunday, when our gospel reading will be Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Here Jesus compares himself to a king who moves among his subjects to see how he is treated. And what is done for the least of those who belong to his family is truly done for him. Until then, go forth with God's blessing. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thine the Amen. Yeah.
place, find the everlasting land, find the breaking of the bread, find the glory, find the story, find the harvest and the cup, find the minion, then the cup is lifted up, lifted up. Find the kingdom, find the prize, find the wonderful surprise. Find the banquet and the praise, and the justice of thy ways. Find the glory, find the story, and the welcome to the least. And the wonder all increasing at thy feast, at thy feast. Beloved of God, go in peace to serve and love the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our postlude today is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation by Walter. <laughs> 